Hi there, I'm Lee. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the Trezor Model T with your Ethereum wallet, or how to access the Ethereum wallet on the Trezor Model T, in other words. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is plug in our Model T into the USB uh, connection. So this is a USB Type-C connector, and the connector in my particular device is quite tough to get in, but we'll pop it in there and it sort of snaps and locks in place. Then you can see on the device it says tap to unlock. And then we need to enter our pin. So I've been using this for demo. So I've just got a basic uh, pin. So just entered our pin there. So we can pop that down for a moment. Don't need to touch that anymore for a second. Now if we open up our Chrome browser, and obviously I'm on the Mac here, but the process is, is exactly the same if you're on a Windows-based PC. So open up the Chrome browser, and then a new tab, and then the address that you want to go to is not that address. It is this address, beta-wallet.trezor.io. Go there. So this is the normal address that you would use for accessing uh, your Bitcoin or Litecoin wallets uh, on your Trezor device. Um, and it, but it's a little different when accessing Ethereum. So if we click on this drop down box, you can see we've got all the different wallet types. And if we go to Ethereum, it advises you to go to the myetherwallet.com uh, website so you can use this button link and we're just going to double check the address make sure everything matches up so if you check the top it's https so it's a secure it's a secure connection and the full address is myetherwallet.com so double check and make sure that there is that is the correct address or you can go there manually and then from this page which is the send ether and tokens option the tab at the top um, also, just to double check, you should already be on there, but double check and make sure your the network is the Ethereum network. Make sure it's not connected to the testnet or um, the Ethereum Classic network. Once you've checked those details, it says, how would you like to access your wallet? So in this case, this is a web interface, but it's kind of accessing the wallet that is on your Trezor. It's not a web-based wallet. You're just kind of using a web-based interface. So we select Trezor and then we want to connect to the Trezor. At this point, you might get a little pop-up uh, that says allow your browser to connect to it. And um, that's kind of gone through automatically. And the next part you're gonna see is export public key for the Ethereum account number one. Um, so this is okay to do, you're not exporting your private key, you're exporting just your public key, which is the address. So we go to export. And then you can see this page here. So you've got this, select this path, and you've got these different paths. By default, it should be this one up here. So select that, which is good for Trezor devices. And then you're gonna also see a list of Ethereum addresses. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter which one you pick, but I would recommend kind of just picking one and using the same one. Um, essentially, your uh, Trezor wallet has multiple different Ethereum addresses that you can use. So you might want to use one for receiving transactions or one for keeping your tokens. You can have it in, in different ways. So I'm going to select this one here, which is the one just at the top. Um, by the way, if you select one that's further down in the list, um, you'll have to kind of keep on going down in that list each time you use it. It won't kind of automatically go to the top. So um, I don't think it's sorted by balance. I think that's just how it um, sorts. So I normally just stick with the top address for simplicity. And then we want to select unlock your wallet. You can see there's already balance on this one because I've just sent over prior to this video section because I kind of wanted it ready to go, but I'll go through the sending and receiving with you. So then we select unlock wallet. And now we are in our wallet. So from here we can receive um, transactions or we can send out transactions. So if we wanted to receive a transaction, we would provide the other party or our other address, uh, sorry, our other wallet with this address on this right hand side here that I've just highlighted. Um, or you could like, you know, you, you could use it in um, like an Ethereum Explorer to get a QR code. I'll show you how to do that uh, just very quickly. So if you go to Ethereum Explorer and we paste in our address, and hit enter. 
So you can see this is the address that we is on our trusted device. And if we wanted to send to it, um, you can use like a QR code. So we can pop up that QR code and then we could send to this uh, device, which is the Model T. Going back to my EFA wallet. Uh, so from this point here, you can see our Ethereum balance. So we can also use this exact same address to receive tokens. So you can send tokens to this address. You can also send, you know, Ethereum tokens out from this address as well. So let's assume that we wanted to send a outgoing transaction. You've got this option here. So we want to send it to, and in this case, I'm going to send it to uh, the original address that I sent from. So I'm going to kind of send it back to myself, not to the Trezor, but to my blockchain wallet, my phone. So we're going to paste this address. So that's what we're going to send to the address that we're sending to. And the amount to send, I'm going to send the entire balance because we're going to clean out this. So it's 0.098. The gas limit, you can just leave it as it is. By default, it normally sets to roughly around the, the right sort of price unless there's extreme load on the Ethereum network. And the next part is we're going to select generate transaction. So you press that, and then at this point, the, the web browser interface is going to connect to the Trezor, and then we're going to confirm it on the Trezor device. So you can see on the device here, we've got a confirmation. So it says we're going to be sending this amount. So the amount is actually written funny. It's like 98887, which we know is it should be written 0.98887. So that's just kind of like a bug, it seems, on the amount. Maybe if we send in a whole number, it would show better. Um, but we're just confirming the amount. And um, also it says to the address. So you can see the full address that we're sending, so the amount and the address that we're sending. And then we're gonna confirm on the Trezor itself by pressing the green button on the screen. And it's just got a, another confirmation. It says the amount and also the gas limit. So I'm gonna to hold to confirm. So that's gone off, or at least been approved. Just the second part, which is just to send the transaction. So we're gonna click that and send it. So it's kind of like a double um, checking uh, way. So we've already approved it on the Trezor device and now we're just kind of re-approving it back in the browser. So we're gonna go yes, obviously just double check all your transaction details and we're gonna send that across. So there's an error message at the bottom there. So it said to confirm it. So I'm kind of wondering at what point was the transaction confirmed? I'm pretty sure it's confirmed just then in the browser, not on the device. But uh, I'll check on the blockchain now and see whether that kind of went back through. Yep, so you can see it here. So this is the Trezor address and we've sent it back to my uh, phone address there so that transaction has gone through so that's it so that's how you send and receive transactions uh, for ethereum on the trezor model t okay that's it for this one if you have any questions or comments uh, post those in the comments area below and i'll be sure to try and help you out as best i can till next time see ya